And this would be quite a new idea, especially to this culture, the idea of redemption and salvation through this, this man who is God in the flesh, Jesus. That's right. I'm very excited to again be joined by the extraordinary archaeologist, Dr. Scott Stripling. I always enjoy getting Scott's perspective as he's the director of the largest archaeological dig in Israel, Shiloh, and the one that discovered the incredible Mount Ebal curse tablet. He's the provost of the Bible Seminary near Houston, Texas, and today, I'm interested in what he can tell me about the 10 Greco-Roman cities known as the Decapolis that we read about in the Gospels. Scott Stripling, again on In Grace, we are discovering hidden Israel, and we wanna talk about this thing we find out in the Gospels, it's called the Decapolis. So we're gonna go see some of the cities of the Decapolis today. Uh, Describe some of, what is the Decapolis? Okay, this is founded in 63 BC when Pompey comes and Jerusalem is reorganized, the entire region is reorganized by Pompey Magnus, who was the the greatest Roman general of his era. He forms this 10 city region and it becomes sort of a Hellenistic or Greco-Roman cultural hub that is sort of a resistance to the Semitic values of the Jewish culture around them. So they're very pagan cities. Yeah. And you're gonna see today from Scythopolis and from Hippos where we're going, the impressive Greco-Roman theaters, the architecture, all those things that they would have encountered as these sort of guys from the backwater in the Galilee and then right. they come into these incredible cities. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Off to the Decapolis. After driving a little over an hour, we arrive at the modern town of Bet Shan. Under this 21st century Jewish city is an ancient Greco-Roman city, Scythopolis, an important city of the 10 Decapolis cities. This is the center of the city. And this city is the center of the Decapolis, so this is a good place to start. Ground zero, but it looks like the city isn't in great shape over here. Uh, all the all the columns are are fallen, and of course, obviously, they found them in ruins. But they're all facing generally the same direction. Yeah, big earthquake in 749 A.D. It wipes out all the cities in this region. So if this city is founded in 63 B.C. by Pompeii, it lasts for 800 years until this earthquake wipes it out. Huh. And then uh, we'll walk up this. So this is like the secondary street. And then this is the main street. They call it the what? This is the Cardo. Mm. This is the Decomunas. Okay. And we're at the intersection of the two. So this is the heart of the city right here. So if you can get a shop at this intersection, that's good stuff. So we've got a temple right here, like a Nepheum. And then along the way, we have another little uh, shrine to Tyche and other Roman gods. So we've got Dionysus. We've got... Um, Aphrodite, we've got Tyche, so it's just integrated into their their way of living. And that was part of the point of the Decapolis, That's right. was to try to integrate that, their, their thoughts of the gods on the Jewish people and those others that lived in these areas. Jim, these people may have seemed that they were more affluent and more happy, but they really weren't. They were disgusted, many of them, with the, the immorality of the Greco-Roman world, and they saw in Judaism and early Christianity, an alternative, hmm. uh, an, another way of living. And so there were many interested, you might think, well, all these people, they're just lost, they're pagans. Among them was a hungry population. And you have to remember also that the first century world was suffering from massive sickness. Hmm. Probably 70% of the population had a malady of some sort. When the disciples come in the power of the spirit and they're healing people, You think they didn't attract a crowd? Mm. They did because they went back to Jesus and said, wow, you wouldn't believe what happened here. And this is all in the backdrop of this ancient tell, and that's the Old Testament Bet Shean. That's Bet Shean. The bodies of Saul and Jonathan are hung from the walls of Bet Shean. It was a, what a tragic, tragic day. David himself just experienced such grief at that that loss. Mm. And then you also talked about Heike, the God of luck. Yes. Things do happen for a reason. And how does a Christian take that? 
Roman name Fortuna, Greek name Tyche, Roman name Fortuna, Fortune. Mm -hmm. So you stop at this shrine, you leave a little offering, say a prayer. Why do you need luck if you're a Greek? Well, you might just be going to the Hippodrome that day to place a bet at the races, okay? <laughs> you might be in business that day hoping that luck or fortune comes your way. A Christian, on the other hand, would be bowing his knee to the Lord Jesus Christ, not to one of these minor Greco-Roman gods. So the concept of luck or randomness guiding our path or a sovereign God guiding our path, those are distinct worldviews. Yeah, impressive. Now, I've these, been here a bunch of times, but every time I come here, I'm just in awe. Well, there's so much to see here. You have to remember that a lot of this was covered, all the, the buildings were covered with white plaster that was painted, bright colors. Huh. So you've got red and purple and green and yellow and wow. all, it's not just white and black like this. Right, so right. silk and gold and all kinds of fresco colors, statues standing here, water flowing out of the mouth of a statue and, uh, Let's just face it, if you were a pagan, <laughs> this would be a pretty good place to live. Look at the beautiful mosaic here on our right. This, wow. de this has certain depictions of scenes from Greek mythology. Again, depicting their, their worldview. And that leads you right up to the bathhouse. And behind that bathhouse is an early Christian church dating as early as the fourth century. And it has a beautiful little baptistry there within it that's very well preserved. It's kind of hidden, so most people don't get to see that, but that shows you that juxtaposition of cultures. Mm -hmm. And really the triumph of Christianity. It was ultimately Christianity that brought the Roman Empire to its knees. Mm -hmm. This is the church. Welcome to church. Hey, yeah, I'm a Baptist. Yeah, so this is this right is gonna work alley. well for you. Yeah. Uh, the baptistry here on one end, the apse of the church on the other end. So you would be preaching from, from up there, then you'd be baptizing people uh, back here in this font. This is a really early one too, by the way. This could be as early as fourth century. And it shows you that, that immersion was being practiced at that time. And you said there was a juxtaposition of this versus the, the Roman style of the bathhouse. This is this wall is abutting a Roman bathhouse or a Byzantine period bathhouse by this point, but it's still a bathhouse. So there you've got all kinds of immorality taking place. That's one culture. Mm -hmm. On the other side of this wall is another culture that's taking place that is transformational. Mm -hmm. They probably still did have people worshiping those old Greco-Roman gods, but here the, the Lord Jesus Christ was being lifted up and there was a clear alternative. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is the theater. Is it the theater and an amphitheater? What's the difference? Well, the theater, you have theatrical performances that, that okay. go on there. Amphitheater is more of an athletic performance. Okay. So okay. they're celebrating here the great Greco-Roman playwrights like Sophocles and Euripides, Aristophanes, and people come during the Dionysus festival. Dionysus is the god of theater arts and alcohol. So they drink large quantities of alcohol in Dionysus' honor, and they come to the theater. And here on the stage with the skene behind it, they portray a Greco-Roman worldview. Just like the power of movies today to implant a paradigm, that's what they had in the ancient world. Hmm. And it was just built right in, into their media, right? Into this, their- That's right. Their culture. And do you think, now some people say those types of things, the theater then, and now it's, you know, movies or whatever, it, is it a reflection of the culture? Is it actually something that is changing the culture? Both. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be both. If you were a Christian and you came here, you would be in a great contrast, okay? Yeah. Because you have drunkenness. That's the whole point of the Dionysus Festival. You honor Dionysus by one of the 12 primary gods by coming to the theater and by consuming alcohol. And so, of course, you can imagine as people drink more and more what it becomes like here. Mm -hmm. And as far as examples of preserved theaters, you know, this is, I would imagine, a pretty good example. It's a great example. But remember, the disciples were sent into the Decapolis, and oh. this is one of those chief Decapolis cities. Polis is the Greek word for city. Mm -hmm. So they come into this, and they would have been in this theater. Mm -hmm. Those Galileans came here. They stood where we're standing. They looked at the awe. I mean, look at the cardo behind us. Look mm -hmm. at these columns here. And coming from Bethsaida or Capernaum, they must have had a sense of awe, even if they thought it was, you know, 
despicable in one sure. sense, they had to be in awe in another sense. So yeah, it's impressive, yeah. Ar the architecture of it. Even today, when, when people come here, when I lead tours to Israel, we always come to Bet Shan. It's, it's impressive, especially to know that this has lasted over 2,000 years. That's right. And we have to always remind ourselves that that's Bet Shion, the big tell behind us there. This is Skipopolis. Mm. So this, has, this is not that Old Testament city with all those Old Testament values. You are in a Greco-Roman city here in the heart of ancient Israel. If you love Israel as much as I do, I would love to send you this free print so that you can say, I stand with Israel and the Jewish people. We also would love to send you the entire Discover Hidden Israel 5 series that shows you incredible things in Israel about Israel. We would also love to send you this beautiful canvas print of the temple. Contact us today. Don't miss this opportunity to get your very own I Stand With Israel print for free from In Grace. We would also love to send you a copy of Discover Hidden Israel 5, as well as our canvas print of the Jewish temple. Contact us today. Just call 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv for more information. Around the time of Christ, a man known as Pliny the Elder wrote about the 10 Greek cities surrounding the Galilee region of Israel. The ruin we just finished exploring, Scythopolis or Bethshan, and the much smaller Hippos, which we will visit next, are the only cities of the Decapolis in modern Israel. The other eight that Pliny mentioned are in today's modern Syria and Jordan. On a previous Ingrace series called Discover Hidden Jordan, we checked out Gadara to the east of the Sea of Galilee. And we explored the amazing city of Gerasa. We also visited Philadelphia, smack dab in the middle of modern Amman. All of these cities of the Decapolis were symbols of the culture and strength of ancient Rome. When reading history, it's easy to forget the hundreds of thousands of individuals that lived in these cities. These were people that the disciples lost their lives trying to reach with the gospel of grace, the same message that we are proclaiming today. And now we arrive at a place I've never been to, but have passed dozens of times, Hippos. This is cool, Scott. All right, like on top of a mountain, this is Hippos? Hippos Susita. Um, Hippos, the Greek word for horse. The Aramaic word was Susita, so Hippos okay. Susita. And, and that would mean, why would they call this horse? Well, there's a saddle when we were driving in, you saw it sort of uh, dips down, okay. and so got the name like from the that. horse's saddle. Right. Okay. And this is one of those Decapolis cities huh. that we were talking about. And this one's really close to where Jesus would have been doing his well, that's right. early ministry. I mean, looking down from here, you'd be able to see Capernaum and Bethsaida, for example. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm looking now directly west. The sun is beginning to set over the Sea of Galilee. This is gorgeous. You can see why this was a high quality of living here, okay? Yeah. The the fresh air. I love it. I mean, yeah. I'm thinking of moving in. Are there <laughs> well, accommodations? There are one right ahead. I can introduce you to the owner up here. <laughs> see, see what he'll he'll have for you. When you're in Israel, you're you're really connecting to so many levels and so many layers. This one being the level of the Roman society trying to <laughs> influence their culture, which was generally godless, right, sinful upon this area. And, and that's really what's happening today and what's happening in every age. And that's the challenge for Christians is to influence the culture, to influence those in the culture without being influenced. Just over this ridge uh, to our left, the archeologists led by Michael Eisenberg, they uncovered a, a complete mask of Pan, the nature god. Uh, pan, like Panias, in Caesarea Philippi, also as part of the Greco-Roman theater. So it gives you an idea that these people were nature worshipers and, you know, a polytheism, there's a God for everything. And so they would have lived a typical Greco-Roman life, but built into that was a sense of dissatisfaction because God creates us with a, a need and a desire to connect with him. Mm. And so they had a longing and then a long time, let's just imagine, I'll be, um, 
James, all right. Who do you want to be among the disciples? Maybe Peter, John. I, I would say James. Andrew, James, Judas. James the lesser. <laughs> you be James the lesser. Okay. All right, so here we go. So we're just walking along, we're fired up, and there's people that we're interacting with, and we're just, our hearts are burning, like, you know, just, Lord, give us give us the wisdom, give us the right opening. Walking down the cardo, we're interacting with people, and we start up a conversation. Excuse me, is there a place to stay the night here? And uh, yeah, yeah, there's a place right over here. So what's your name? Blah, 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 blah. How about we buy your dinner tonight, okay? And now we've got a contact. And so we begin to share the gospel and interact with these people. Hmm. And look at how it would have looked in biblical times. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're moving up and down this street. You've got shops on either side, just like at Scythopolis. And you can see even the wagon wheels today hmm. that are worn into the street. Hmm. Well, here in Israel, the Bible comes alive, doesn't it? This is amazing. Remember the earthquake we talked about at okay. Scythopolis? Okay. All right, same thing. Wow. Wipe these guys out too. All the same. Direction. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, a, a again, another church in here. You can see all the column bases and all the drums, the apses here to the side. This is a triapsal form. And the hole in the floor? The hole in the floor is probably a baptismal font. Yeah. And then there's another one up here on the side. So when the Christians came, they built churches. And more than one at a site like this. Perhaps one is destroyed and they build another, or maybe there's <laughs> denominational differences among them. Well, that never know. happens. But uh, yeah, that's that's life was very nuanced in biblical times. Mm. Here you can see this is nice new signage. This is the Agora, the big gathering area. So you want to know where the two Jameses would go? <laughs> this is where they would be because this is where everyone's hanging out. And that's where discourse would happen and new ideas would be presented. That's right. And this would be quite a new idea, especially to this culture, the idea of redemption and salvation through this, this man who is God in the flesh, Jesus. Here on the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee, it's about 50% Jew, 50% Gentile. They interacted with each other a lot. And these ideas of kind of what's going on in the Galilee, news of Jesus had spread, I'll assure you. And so it wasn't the first that these guys had heard of it. They were probably really interested. Oh, so you're followers of this guy, tell us about it. Uh, I think they would have found a receptivity like at Mars Hill. They're always interested in the, the latest idea. The forum, it leads you down to the theater. When you want to go down to the, the sea, you can go down and do some fishing, yeah. hang out. Huh. Got another Byzantine church up here. And then this is the theater just, just in front of us. So it would have sat up a bit, uh, quite a bit, right? Yes, it would have been quite a bit higher. You can see where the seats sure. you know, would have been. This would be the stage and the skein here. And uh, yeah, so you've got a couple hundred, two or three hundred Maybe, maybe, maybe the whole city would fit in there. I don't know, maybe 500 people. I don't think I've ever seen one this small. Right, so this is a, a small population, let's say 500 people here, with the upper deck, which hasn't survived. Maybe the whole town would be able to fit in here for special occasions. But if not, they're still having theatrical performances here. That Mask of Pan, yeah, that's, he's associated with the theater. So these people are also celebrating the Dionysus Festival. You have to have a theater or you can't get that polis <laughs> designation that they need to be as part of the Decapolis. So you build a nice little theater. Pretty cool. Yeah. But remember the worldview, these, these theatrical performances are pre presenting a worldview. Oedipus Rex, for example, you take, what, what's he writing about? So Oedipus, he, kills his father not knowing that it's his father because he's separated from his family in childhood. He ends up marrying his mother not knowing that it's his mother. Mm. And so he's dealing with this idea of he can't find redemption. He, he learns that he's killed a king and he's had incest in these relations with his mother and he gouges his eyes out, you know, as a result of this. The fact that he didn't have intention to do any of these things, he's still guilty. There's not a concept of redemption. Okay. Now, along come James and James, all right? And we show up and that's the worldview these people have. And we start saying, no, haven't you heard of Jesus of Nazareth? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's very powerful, impactful with the Sea of Galilee, sunset, you know, the mountains around, the breeze blowing. A brand new sight for me, which I'm almost ashamed I've been here over 20 times leading tours and a new place. But that's Israel. I mean, there are so many places I still haven't been. You're kind of ruining me because now I want to include this on the tour and I don't have time. <laughs> well, I had a day. 
Yeah, out of date. Really amazing to look at all of these cities, the cities of the Decapolis, and see how Jesus sent his disciples into these places. I believe that means that God loves everybody, not just the Jews, not just the Hellenized Jews, not just the, the Romans or the pagans, but all of us. We've all gone astray. We've all tried to earn our way when the Bible clearly says that we cannot, we're lost and therefore we need a savior, one that is willing and able to save us. And fortunately, that's exactly what the Bible says, that we have a savior. He died for our sins. He was perfect, he never sinned, he did great things, but he died for me, he died for you on a cross. That was the message that the disciples were to bring. That's the message that I wanna share with you and that you can be saved from your sins. You can be saved from hell to heaven by simple faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The good news of eternal life is available for you right now. If you love Israel as much as I do, I would love to send you this free print so that you can say, I stand with Israel and the Jewish people. We also would love to send you the entire Discover Hidden Israel 5 series that shows you incredible things in Israel about Israel. We would also love to send you this beautiful canvas print of the temple. Contact us today. Don't miss this opportunity to get your very own I Stand With Israel print for free from In Grace. We would also love to send you a copy of Discover Hidden Israel 5, as well as our canvas print of the Jewish temple. Contact us today. Just call 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv for more information. Join us next week for Gethsemane, the battle in the garden, on location in Jerusalem. Here in the Garden of Gethsemane, an epic battle was fought. Just like the first garden, the Garden of Eden, where mankind lost the first epic battle. But here in this garden, the great victory. Jesus said, not my will, but thine. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.